Hello and welcome to another Knife Making Tuesday. I'm your host John Grimsbo, and this week I've got a sweet little engraving project that I want to work on. Um, I don't have a lot of extra time, so I'm just going to tag you along and uh, I'll show you what I've been up to. So first off, I'm not going to do fancy screen capture program or whatever, I'm just going to show you what's going on here. So I've been working on a knife for a customer, this is what he sent me. Um, normally, I don't do super custom, make this exactly like I drew it for you, um, requests from people because it takes a lot of extra time and I'm frazzled enough as it is already. But anyway, I agreed to do this a long time ago and I want to do it and I've been looking forward to it, so let's bang it out right now. So basically what we got here is a damn steel blade, already got that taken care of, a starburst pattern from here, and a starburst pattern from here with an arc. I've done that before almost so on my knife I've got linear in the front and starburst in the rear so I just have to recode um, starburst in the front which wasn't too difficult the line is a huge pain in the butt for many many reasons doing two different color anodizings with the silver line is a huge pain in the butt um, hopefully Eric will elaborate on that by the end of the video um, and then also the guys in Alaska he's been in Alaska for 40 years so he wants the Alaska flag with the North Star um, engraved there, and he wants gold, blue, gold stars. It it's all little stuff, but it adds up to be kind of a big hassle. <laughs> but as I said, I agreed to do it. So here we're in SolidWorks and HSM Works. I'll show you first the. Um, I'll open up the part file, and if I go over here unsuppress my picture. I went on um, Google Images, I just look for Alaska flag. There. And I just copied in this flag picture and then I, I traced out the stars over top as you can see. Um, this one I moved a little bit just because it was getting close to the edge of my handle. Uh, and then I can go and I can hide that picture so it's not in the way. Um, so yeah, technically the North Star is a tiny bit off, but it, whatever. Don't tell them. So in HSM Works, I don't want to regenerate. Um, I've got a couple different toolpaths that I'm using to do this. Uh, first of all, the the pattern, the starburst pattern, was suggested by my buddy Chris Scott. So I've actually got his. He, he is the the Chris Scott pattern now. Um, so those two are my two patterns. As you can see, they're separated and defined by the line. In this is HSM Works, the full 3D version. Uh, you can separate the center point, which is right there, and then the machining boundary. I basically drew a line around there, including the arc. And you can see I just kind of selected around. So this is the machining boundary. Um, I believe it's outside the part, an eighth of an inch, so that the end mill will actually wrap around the outside of the part and do the corner round all the way down. But then I also did check surfaces here, which means do not touch uh, these pink surfaces right there. Oops, I'm adding stuff here. So I, I'm telling it not to touch the profile, the outside edge, because I don't want little dips there. But I do want it to do the corner rounder, which as you can see it did quite nicely on my knife here. and it did this ramp right here running out of memory card um, yeah so I love the 3D patterns in HSM works super awesome and then for the Alaska stars I'm doing it two ways um, because of the color variations I'm gonna have to do the stars first by themselves from a flat handle um, and because of that, I'm just doing super conservative step-downs. So star, step-down, star, step-down. 
Let's uh, simulate that real quick. This is faster than real life, but... So this roughs it out, but you can see it leaves a nub in the middle. So then the next toolpath... I'm going to skip ahead and do that one first. And then I'm going to do the next toolpath, which is a radial toolpath. With the center of the star as the center point, it's just going back and forth, getting rid of that nub in the middle. Hopefully that doesn't break my end mill on the first pass. Um, I don't think it will, but... So this adds a lot of time, but I don't care. So you can see this is the radial pattern. Look at all those lines. I think it calculated this one star for the finishing takes 13 minutes. Um, but it's going to look awesome. And all the stars with the roughing and the finishing take 23 minutes with a machining distance of 3,000 yards. So 3, 1, 3, 6 times 3 is 9,000 feet divided by 5,000 is almost 2 miles of toolpath just to do these little stars. Pretty awesome. So yeah, that's the gist of it. I'm running out of memory cards, so I gotta dump some files off. Um, yeah, now I think the code is good. I think, hopefully I don't break my little 132nd ball mill um, roughing out those stars, because I have to go pretty deep. So I machine the stars first, anodize the stars gold, and then I'll go back and machine the 3D pattern, the starburst, um, and then Eric can work his magic on the masking and anodizing and tumbling and all that. So. Maybe he'll uh, take the camera and do that. We're right in the middle of moving the shop right now. We're, we're moving the machinery in a few days, so I just want to get some of this work off my plate um, before we move so that it, at least the machining is done. So, yeah. All right, in the shop now, um, as you can see, I've got Ken's handles. They've been at this stage. Like, the back sides are all done. Top sides are profiled, lock bar cutouts done. So the tops are mostly done except for the pattern. And I've had them here for many, many months now. Um, not on the fixture, but done. Um, so they're ready to go. I've got my offset set. I just need to put the right tool in. Um, but something I wanted to mention, a quick side note, about the QualiChem coolant that I'm using. We've been so busy painting and cleaning the new shop for the past three weeks that I haven't, I don't even think I've turned this on in three weeks. And we've been very humid weather, very hot and there isn't a speck of rust anywhere. My brand new spindle is still nice and new. It's a little dirty and oily, but there isn't a speck of rust anywhere because the coolant is so good and oily. Whereas the synthetic stuff I was running, it would rust overnight, just with the littlest moisture anywhere. So big plus one for QualiChem. Love that stuff. All right, let me load my code in. I've got it on my uh, little USB sticky right here. So unfortunately with the amount of coolant that I now use with my upgraded pump and everything and the full enclosure, um, the days of getting the camera in really close and being able to see everything are quickly diminishing. Um, <clears throat> I used to be able to, you know, I'd have much less coolant pressure so I, and I didn't have the full enclosure so I could get the camera, you know, right up in there and be able to see almost everything and I had that clear coolant the synthetic stuff. Now with the white quality cam, you can't see anything, so it's kind of a shame. <laughs> I'm gonna miss that, but whatever, that's progress. So it's all ready to go, I'm just gonna hit go, we'll get a couple shots on the outside, won't be able to see too much. Um, hopefully it doesn't destroy my tool, and uh, let's do it. All right, here we go. I really should um, clean the glass here. If it was clean, you'd be able to see that, but it's not. Cross your fingers. Looks like it's going good. It's that first rapid move into the part um, that always makes you nervous. Ah, it's so difficult. So 
So as I mentioned in my shop tour video, I'm getting rid of this extremely loud, annoying air compressor, as you heard in that last scene. Um, it's loud, it's annoying, but it's going to a good friend of mine, Liam, uh, who lives a couple hours away. We're going to meet up later this summer and he's going to get it for a good price. Happy to see it go to him. Um, it's a great compressor. It's just loud and we're in here all the time and it runs all the time and we film and it's a big deal. Um, so the new one that we got for the new shop is um, it's awesome. We haven't gotten it yet, but we'll probably get it next week. But it's all signed and, and sealed. Um, it looks like the uh, engraving's moving on to a couple different stars. Hard to see anything in there, but um, but um, uh, it should be doing good. I haven't heard any weird noises or anything. So while that's going, as I said, it's super conservative. I think it's going to run for about 13 minutes. Or was it 26? No, 13, I think. Um, so while that's doing that, I'm going to take apart some rebuilt brake calipers for my car so that uh, I can get them powder coated because I know a powder coating guy now. Um, so I'm going to get those powder coated so that they don't rust and uh, look good forever. Bit of a side project while the machine's running. Love it. I was able to turn the coolant off because we're doing the finishing pass, it doesn't take very much. Let's check this out. Looks like it's going pretty good. I'm going to turn the coolant back on just because. And uh, yeah, it looks like it's going fine. Didn't break the end mill. At the one spot, that little post in the middle where I thought it would, um, it should be fine. Well, after a runtime of 23 minutes, this is not a race. I was going very conservatively, stepping down just 5,000 at a time. Uh, but it did it fantastically. That one looks awesome, these ones all look awesome. Excellent, that is super duper cool. Now to pull it off, make that scale gold so that the stars on the inside are gold, and then I'll machine the 3D pattern on the top. So I'm looking at this uh, star engraving under my loop. I've got two loops that I use. <clears throat> this one I've showed before. I've got I got it out of a laser, um, out of a scanner. Works awesome. This one a bit higher power. Um, got it off of Amazon for like ten bucks. You need these. Everybody get one of these. Got an LED. Uh, they're awesome. So I was looking at this under the uh, the loop and just looking at the quality and the intricacy of it. And I mean. A lot of people complain that the Tormac can't do tight tolerance accurate stuff. It can. Uh, it's got its limitations, of course, but um, I mean, it's it's no no super high end professional machine. It doesn't compare to the stuff that I see at the tool shows. That's not the point. The point is, I'm in my garage right now, and I can do this kind of precision detail work, regardless of how long it takes. Um, it looks awesome. I'm so happy to be able to do it. All right, time to anodize. Now, Eric's not here right now. He is the anodizing expert. This is his corner of the shop. He's actually at the new shop. Um, but I certainly know how to do anodizing. He just does it a lot more and a lot better than me. But 
first step is to clean it. So we've got a Windex, Windex cleaner right here and a couple different rinses. He's got three rinse stations. Rinse one, rinse two, rinse three, and I can see that they get progressively cleaner. And that's what he's found uh, needs to be done to make sure the parts are super duper clean. So, old toothbrush, just brush, make sure all the cooling comes off. This actually takes the uh, Sharpie marker right off too. So I am going to make the whole part gold, even though most of it's going to get machined away. And then, I, um, when you flip it to clean the other side, obviously don't touch the clean side with your dirty, dirty fingers. So I'm going to go rinse. I'm just going to do two rinses. Then I'm going to hold it with a paper towel. Clean the other side. The anodizing portion. Here we have our little anodizing container. It's very small. I don't know why Eric hasn't moved into a bigger one yet. We have. We've just gone back and forth. Um, we've gone through many different anodizing solutions. Uh, sulfuric acid we did for a long time. Very, very, very weak. Like 1% solution. Um, what else do we do? Borax and water works pretty good. Right now we're using baking soda and water. And I can't tell you the mix ratio, but for a jar this size, just call it a big spoonful. I don't know. It doesn't need much. And it works surprisingly well, and it's the cleanest, safest solution ever. It's just baking soda water. Um, so there's no, no fears with using sulfuric. Um, I'm going to blow off the uh, stars. So I know they're dry. And when I put it in here, i got to make sure that they don't have bubbles in them. So I'm poking a little titanium rod in each star because bubbles will not get anodized properly. Okay. Should be good for action. Try to position it so you can see it. Oops, I lost it. Yeah, so I'm not, this isn't a how to anodize tutorial really, but basically negative goes to, I've got some old titanium handles in the back here as the cathode, a plastic uh, separator piece, and then the piece itself is the anode. Uh, make sure you have more cathode than anode. Minor detail. Um, and then negative goes to the cathode, positive goes to the part. Make sure everything's touching and making good contact. And then we'll, uh, we'll slowly go up the voltage here. Or should we ramp it up? It's always more fun to ramp it up. Whatever, I'll just ease it up. Let's see, there's 10 volts. Yeah, it's going bronze now. See how it's just starting to bubble? It's 20 volts, should be purple once it, uh, once it works. Let's go up to blue. Gold is right around, Eric told me 65. That's his magic number. So I'm going to stop early at 50. Let it creep up a little bit. I see a light green. There's a light green around 40, I usually find. Um, pop the bubbles off. Lost my clip. Anyway, you get the point. Uh, it's almost gold now. And that's how it works. So we'll stop it when it is gold. Well, when you put them side by side, I mean, that sure is gold now, isn't it? Raw titanium, gold. Cool. Let's cut it all off. Right now we are doing the 3D milling portion. I'll show you on mine. We're doing this pattern, but with the starburst pattern, not the linear. So it's going back and forth and doing the starburst. see nothing you just trust that it's working fantastic news people it totally worked the gold stars I made them 10 thou deeper than the surface and they pop oh they pop so nicely 
So remember the front's going to be gold, the back is going to be blue, and we can anodize over this gold stars because blue will not uh, cover them. So Eric's going to have to mask and nail polish and etc. to get this thing nice and perfect, but uh, the 3D surface turned out so nice. That quality cam coolant, I'm telling you, it makes things shinier. My parts are so much shinier and have a better finish and less burrs with that coolant than with the other coolant. What do you know? Using the right stuff really uh, does make a difference. Anyway, that's it for now. Um, maybe Eric will pick this up when he gets to anodizing. I gotta set this up, make it flip and lock up and all, the, all that, and then I'll make sure to show a clip uh, when it's all done. Welcome back. We are here at our new shop. And I got this Alaska knife finished. Um, Eric did everything from when I showed you last till now. All the anodizing and polishing and etching and sharpening and all that. But let's check it out. It looks... Wow. It looks phenomenal. Look at that. Oh yeah. The etch on the damage steel turned out perfect. The gold and blue anodizing, the stars turned out great. Gold clip. Oh, it just drops effortlessly. Yeah, turned out awesome. Um, Eric mentioned in a very complaining way that this arc is the bane of his existence. So, like, for um, my knife, also has the same arc. Every time he does it and has to do a two-color anodizing, um, it's it's difficult. And, and sorry I didn't get to film, I didn't have him film when uh, he was doing it, but basically he used, you know, various combinations of nail polish and electrical tape to mask off one whole section while he anodizes the front and then has to manually polish the inside without affecting either of the anodized colors. And It's difficult and it's very easy to screw it up, and he did screw it up the first time. He did the gold first, masked off some of the blue, but not all the blue, so there were some gold sections over here, and he had to strip it all down again, rebuff it, retumble it, re-anodize it, and then polish the line afterwards. So it, it was a huge pain in the butt, um, huge investment of time just, just to get this look. You know, not, not worth it in the end for whatever I'm charging the customer, um, but it is pretty freaking awesome. And it's mostly just this arc because it's not a straight line, so you can't do a straight piece of tape. It, the stars were pretty easy, as I showed in the beginning. I mean, cut the stars, make them gold, and then cut the rest, and it worked awesome. But yeah, very, very, very happy. Number 414. Excellent etch on this Hacapella pattern damasteel. Yeah, love it. Love it, love it, love it. Alright, um, so that is how we did that. So thank you so much for watching. Um, I have no idea when this video is going up in sequence with other videos that I've been filming, but the new shop is pretty awesome. Um, we're really enjoying it here. We're just getting comfortable. We've been here for a month and a half now, and um, I mean, that's probably only been three weeks of actually having stuff here. The rest has just been painting, cleaning and painting and cleaning and painting. So anyway, um, I'm sure you've already seen other videos of that, or maybe not yet. But, um, but yeah, things are good. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.